speech today is going to be kind of a little bit along those lines, um, just kind of a little bit of background <coughs> along with what I've got to share. And I'm going to have a little disclaimer at the beginning. I am an engineering student, so I'm not very much into speaking to crowds, but I will do my best, so just bear with me through any ahs and hmms. <laughs> um, so I want to start out with um, talking about who God is to me, and um, that was a question that the pastors asked along with a few others, and this was the one that uh, kind of stuck out to me because uh, growing up as a young photographer, I always looked at God kind of from the nature's perspective, just seeing God in the mountains all the way down to insects, just the uh, DNA of God just seen all over the, the place. And as I went to school, we, we started to see the a little bit more detail with the God of nature. And I'm reminded of this in Psalms 19 that says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day into day utters His speech, and night into night reveals His knowledge. So, it is the Bible, with parallel with uh, science, we get to see God's handiwork shown. We also can see in nature law and order, because with God, there is a certain amount of order that he has established in the earth. So like the Ten Commandments, when we do the things that he has asked us to do, we get the benefits of life and happiness. With science, you can do the same thing. You have, you can do calculations on how to get a man on the moon. Isn't that uh, amazing to be able to have physics and math <coughs> line up so that you can get such a marvelous thing done? <coughs> and even just kind of backing up a little, you can do that in a lot of different ways, like with flight. If you have the proper uh, materials and proper uh, devices, you can get off the ground by working with physics to be able to get that accomplished. Next slide. So, in the Bible, we get to see that if we do certain things, we get God's blessing on it. Like in Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong and great of good courage? Do not be afraid or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It is in these scriptures that you see that the order and the law that God has provided us. If we do the things that God has placed in his word, then we will get the results that we desire to see. Again in Deuteronomy 28. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commandments I give you today. The Lord your God will set high above, set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow the commandments and decrees that I am giving you today, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. I come to this next point. In our Christian lives, we many times are sowing and reaping what we have been doing in our lives. And we can be sowing the Word of God into our lives, 
or we can be choosing our own way. We can be following the world's example and getting the results that many other people do in the world. We can make choices that give us either life or death. And that is amazing that we have just nature to look at, to see that. That you can plant a cucumber seed, and you will get cucumbers. You're not going to get watermelons, ever. It's always going to be as God designed. The life in the seed always produces life ever, after its own kind. So, as an encouragement today, is to take a look at what we're doing in our lives. Take a look at, what am I sowing into my life so that tomorrow, what am I going to be reaping? I am currently working in a gym, and I can see this every day. The young men and women that come to school, they dedicate themselves to working out. Some have been at it for a long time, and they have produced results by showing str strength in their and good physique. Um, if we will do the same thing in our daily walk with God. <coughs> Read scripture, feed our faith, and work that faith. We will grow in our strength in an ability to walk this life in faith. deviating a little bit, but in the same spot, what does God mean to me? On a more personal level, He is my provider and providence. As George Washington gave credit to God, it is the duty of nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God. Well, today I want to stand here and say, God is a wonderful provider. It says in the Bible, Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And again, 2 Corinthians 9.10, He that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruit of your righteousness. One of the many blessings that God has given me throughout my few young years here on earth is that, well, Immediately after high school, God blessed me with a job. And it was even before I had officially graduated. I had taken a few free classes for getting prepared for the GED. And my professor that was giving me the classes said, Hey, I got a, I got a, a job. Would you be interested? I'm like, well, sure. <laughs> so upon graduation, I had a, my first job. And through... Each of the stair steps in life, God has always been able to provide me with an increase in job opportunities. And even in college, while I've been going there these few years, I've always been blessed with a little bit of financial aid in the form of scholarship. And on top of that, the pro Providence. Back in uh, November, I ended up hitting a deer with my car. But thankfully, God had protected me, and it was a very minor incident, so that my car was not totaled. I just had about $100 worth of fixes, so it could have been a lot worse. But through God's graceful mercy, it was not. <laughs> so, finally, and I think we can all agree with me on this, God is our Savior from this dark earth. Many times we kind of just take it for granted as we walk this Christian life that we are saved from such a horrible life, but there are people out there, many of them, that have no clue on who God is or what he has provided for them. Um, I currently 
um, when I'm at work at school, there's a young lady that comes in, and she's a total agnostic, and she quizzes me on who God is. What Jesus does is Christianity, as, as my belief, is Christianity as good as Buddhism? She asks questions on, would you date somebody that would be gay or anything like that? And I have to ask myself, how can I be a light to this young lady? How can I show her my God as Savior? And I do my best to answer in a form that is encouraging to her and not in a condescending way. So I work on saying, well, my, from what I read in the Bible, what my pastor may have said, and tr try to encourage her in a, in a direction that will create questions in her own mind. Well, maybe, maybe the path that I'm on, maybe there's questions and doubts in my mind about reincarnation or wh whatever and whomever may believe this. What can I do to show her? And it, when I basically am working on doing is being, next slide, is trying to show her the truth of God's word, that the, it is the devil in many times that creates the darkness in this world, and it is Jesus that is the answer, the Savior. Like in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundant. And as in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One thing I want to encourage you today is be friends with the world to a degree because they need to see the light. They need to see who Jesus is, that he is the savior of the world. And kind of on a final note, like I mentioned earlier, is how can we show the world that Christianity is not just another religion. It is a relationship with God. We do not work for our own righteousness. It is a free gift. We have other religions. And I was talking with another young lady uh, a little while ago. She is majoring at UVA <coughs> to study Middle Eastern religions, specifically the Muslim religion. And one of the things she says is that they don't have hope. They d never know if they're actually being good enough to get into glory. They're always trying to outweigh the bad that they have done. So my encouragement today is, if you can, remind people that it is by God's grace we are saved. We are called unto good works. But that is not the key to Paul heaven. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> and I hope that I kept that under attendance. You did good. <laughs>